sometimes we cheer for the underdog more than often. We can't wait for villains to get what's coming to them. Then, of course, the unexpected plot twist kills a character we are rooting for. It doesn't take a film anthology to get there. Sometimes a single character taking a few minutes of screen time does enough to have people rallying behind them just for the story to let the proverbial axe stall on top of them and turn off audiences for a lifetime. The following list is a top 10 several movie deaths that came out of the blue really made audiences angry. Many of them are still discussed Stay to this me. day, speaking volumes about their enduring legacy. Number 10. John Connor. Terminator. Dark Fate. Expectations were really high. When yet, another reboot of the Terminator franchise was announced by James Cameron. He was not directing this time around. But he was leaving everything in the capable hands of Tim Miller. People got excited with the casting call as Linda Hamilton, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Edward Furlong were asked to return for Dark Fate. However, in premiere day, people didn't get a chance to enjoy the long-awaited reunion as another T-800 kills John Connor. In the film's first five minutes, the absolute bait and switch and bad word of mouth killed any momentum for the movie, which was deemed a box office flop that didn't even manage to recoup its budget. Number 9. Thomas, My Girl, After Home Alone became a worldwide hit. Macaulay Culkin was a massive star and was included in multiple projects. My Girl is one of the sweetest coming-of-age stories told back in the 90s, the movie. Directed by Howard Z. Fan, written by Loris Elowaney, features Culking as Thomas, a sickly young boy that comes out of his shell. Thanks to a girl named Vada, played by Anna Chlumsky, Thomas's bond with Vada reaches intimacy levels when they share their first kiss. After that, Thomas goes looking for Vada's mood ring, only to find it close to a beehive. Since Thomas is highly allergic, he dies after multiple bee stings. The death of the bow was not only shocking but also unexpected. The funeral scene is even sadder when Vada loses her mind after seeing his friend in a casket. Number 8. Yondu. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. As most audiences were unfamiliar with his style, the whole cast reunites for a story taking place right after the first film's events. As the team gathers to fight Ego, the living planet, who is revealed to be Peter Quill's dad after thwarting the villain's plans. Quill falls to his knees. We should always expect James Gunn to play with our feelings. In any superhero film he directs, people are looking forward to what he has to offer with Superman as he knows how to craft a story. Balancing dark and light, he took us for a ride with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, thinking his last moments are about to come, only to be rescued by Yondu Adonta played by Michael Rooker, as Quill's respirator fail. Yondu gives up his own before saying goodbye, that was cruel. But it was a show of great depth for the character. Number 7. Luke Skywalker, Star Wars, The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi is already six years old. And people are still talking about it. Ryan Johnson did a number on Star Wars fans and broke the fandom forever to a point. That seems beyond repair to this day. The writer and director somehow saw fit to pull a deconstructive narrative for Luke Skywalker, played by Mark Hamill, by making him a grumpy hermit negating the ways of the Force, and admitting to trying to kill his own pupil, Ben Solo, for sensing great darkness in him. Luke resurfaces on Planet Crate to help the Resistance escape as Kylo Ren is getting ready to wipe them out during their final duel is revealed. Luke was sending a force projection of his being, which drains him, eventually killing him in the process. The unfitting ending to a beloved legacy character still feels like a slap in the face, as no one can talk about this without getting riled up all my. Number 6. Dumbledore. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Every fan of the books knew this one was coming, yet somehow many people got riled up when it happened. The death of Albus Dumbledore, played by Michael Gambon, is one of the most crucial Don't moments in the film anthology, as the wise and enigmatic headmaster of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry devised the plan with Professor Snape to help him regain Voldemort's trust. Having Snape kill him made it easier for him to devise a plan to kill the Dark Lord finally, as Dumbledore was cornered. He was supposed to be killed by Draco Malfoy, 
that the quick thinking of Snape saved the Bo's soul. The scene is a total tearjerker for fans of the franchise, with some expressing hope for a last-minute change in the plot that allowed the wizard to live. Number 5. Whistler. Blade. Trinity. Chris Christopherson plays Whistler with a great demeanor and imposing presence. The mentor of Blade is a tough-as-nail grizzly old man with a no-nonsense attitude and very little patience. Of course, this would all prove pointless as the FBI, of all people, kills Whistler at the beginning of Blade. Trinity. Let's say it wasn't only the audiences the ones to be less than thrilled with these events. Wesley Snipe made life a living hell for everyone involved in the production as he felt the movie was a vehicle to promote the career of then up and coming superstar Ryan Reynolds, which didn't sit well with him one bit. Number 4. Coffee. The Green Mile. Now here's one death no one wanted to happen. And yet it happened as scheduled. The Green Mile is one of the many film adaptations of Stephen King's novel. In this magnificent like movie directed by Frank Darabont, we have Michael Clark Duncan as Coffee, a gentle giant with supernatural healing powers on death row, for supposedly killing two white girls in Louisiana. Coffee is already condemned to die but manages to do plenty of great deeds. Before being executed in the electric chair, his memory is survived by prison guard Paul Edgecom, played by Tom Hanks, who would be cured of bladder infection by coffee while also obtaining a long lifespan. Number 3. Jack. Titanic. The debate sparked by the death of Jack in Titanic still rages on. You can find multiple studies and video essays explaining how Jack and Rose would have fit in the wooden plank, which is pretty amusing to say the least. The magnificent film by James Cameron is the film that launched the career of Leonardo DiCaprio as a major movie star. Leo plays the role of Jack, a young artist who falls in love with a socialite named Rose, played by Kate Winslet. In the ill-fated RMS Titanic, the selfless act of Jack to ensure Rose's survival has sparked endless debates, with many people claiming the character could have survived and James Cameron finally caving in saying it would have been possible, but it would have killed the dramatic input of the story as he envisioned it. Number 2. Gwen Stacy. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Comic fans are always in for Hante. When someone gets the role of Gwen Stacy in any Spider-Man media, she's always been Peter Parker's true love, and her death was a milestone in the comics. Maturing the character and transitioning from a bow into a young adult, Peter is defined by her death as much as his uncle Ben, as he feels responsible for both events. The relaunch of Spider-Man by Mark Webb chose Emma Stone to play Gwen Stacy. Casual fans were shocked at the character's death in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, even more so after Peter genuinely tried to save her. Gwen meets her demise in comic-accurate fashion. We would learn years later in No Way Home that this version of Peter is still affected by this event as he stopped showing restraint when stopping criminals in his world. Number 1. Tony Stark, Avengers, Endgame. Some would say Iron Man's final fate in the MCU is inevitable. The character was built up from the ground, with plenty of failings to become a driving force for good eventually. Avengers, Endgame was set to be the last chapter in the Infinity Saga, directed by the Russo brothers with a solid script by Christopher Marcus and Stephen McPhee. Robert Downey Jr. returns to the role that helped him build back his career for one last ride. In the film's final act, the whole team is fighting a time-displaced Thanos, who is seeking to use the Infinity Stones to wipe out all life on Earth. As they dared to undo his work, Tony uses the unique feature of his Mark 85 suit to swipe the gems into his and wish Thanos out of existence. It was a poignant moment in the MCU that left a sour taste in fans' mouths, as the cinematic universe has never been the same since he left. Well, that's it for today's video. Let us know in the comment section down below whose death made you cry the most. If you like the video do give it a thumbs up and do subscribe the channel. Thank you.